Hi everybody, my name is Stephen Capet. I'm a product manager at Google and I focus on identity, specifically Workforce Identity Federation, which this presentation is about. And I'm um, luckily or thrilled to be joined by Alan from VMware today. Alan, how are you doing? Doing pretty good, Stephen. Happy to be here. And um, as Stephen just said, my name is Alan Gamboa. I'm currently a full stack engineer at VMware. Great, Alan. Thanks very much for joining me today. Uh, Alan's, uh, it's great to have Alan in terms of making this uh, real in terms of uh, customer actually leveraging the capability of this, of this feature. So just in terms of what we'll be going to, um, as I mentioned, Workforce Identity Federation uh, is a new offering that extends uh, Google's existing cloud identity management capabilities. And it lets you use your, uh, your existing identity provider. And I say existing, potentially some third party, basically an external to Google identity provider and you want to utilize those user identities to authenticate and authorize access to Google resources. And that's what Workforce Identification does. So we'll be going through that, I'll give you an overview. And then I'll be handing over to Alan in terms of uh, detailing their specific scenario. And Alan's kind of also got a demo for us in terms of again showing this, this capability in action. So let's jump straight in in terms of this, uh, this product. So very simply in terms of you know, what, what is the current reality customers are experiencing today uh, when it comes to identity management? Uh, things are getting more complex. The security risk is getting bigger um, and they've got to consider what the user's experience is, making sure it's seamless, but still with adequate controls and making sure customers can get, users can get access to the things they need to get their jobs done. Um, so that onboarding and protecting the users is obviously imperative. Um, seamless experience I mentioned. So it's things like single sign-on. Users don't want to have to remember multiple usernames and passwords. They want to be able to leverage, you know, that rich capability they have or the organization does in terms of multi-factor authentication and leverage that same identity in terms of accessing other systems. So single sign-on is, is imperative. There's privacy and regulatory considerations to consider. And then when I talk about that seamless or that management, again, just like users don't remember multiple usernames and passwords, the organization also wants to try and simplify the, the management of, of those RDP solutions. So especially when we start considering you know, multi-cloud environments now as well. So all of these considerations are, are key. Um, and this is, you know, these are the type of things that uh, Workforce Identity Federation delivers on. So let's explain how, how it does that. So very simply, uh, you can read it on the on the left there, but what we have with, with Workforce Identity Federation is an ability to quickly enable users leveraging those existing identity providers, user entities or, st or stores rather, and give them direct secure access to Google Cloud services and resources. Um, so the big point here is that you're not, you don't need to synchronize Workforce user identities. You know, consideration of privacy with cloud identity is, you know, we could obviously always federate, um, but the reality is you then have to synchronize those uh, Active Directory or Okta or Forge Rock, whatever it might be, you need to synchronize those identities into cloud identity. And that's again, as I mentioned, additional management overhead. So with this new capability, it is a synchronous, synchronous experience. Uh, very simply, the user will log in to the existing identity provider and they will get, get issued a token and that token is then passed through to Google and it is checked. Basically, there's attributes in that token, checking things like group membership, for example, or the user's name, whatever it might be, whatever you want to contain within that, within that token, and then conditional access is given based on those attributes. An example is something like a group. If you want to give access to uh, you know, permanent employees versus temporary employees, as long as that token stipulates uh, that that member or that user is a member of the respective group, then they're given or denied access. So it gives you that, uh, that granularity. And workforce identification um, is broad in terms of you know, the, the services that you can leverage or detailed on our product page, which I'll share at the end of the presentation, but very simply in terms of once they authenticate, and the, I'll show in a second, as I said, the, the architecture here, but they'll give an access, they can access via the cloud console, they can leverage uh, the SDK, or in other words, like the Google Cloud CLI, or an API, a BigQuery API, or uh, you know, GKE API, for example, whatever the service is that that user requires, uh, they can access it on interface via this, via this mechanism, as long as obviously it's one of the Google supported products that's uh, one of the products that supports Workforce Identity Federation. So when I think of why customers would want this, I detail some of the pains they're experiencing today, but in terms of there's four key things I've identified or that the team has identified at the moment uh, in terms of what we see um, Synchless, I've just detailed, is imperative in terms of making sure this isn't another identity store that has to be managed. Then in terms of if we look at control, anytime we look at identity and security, 
know, fine grained access controls embedded to the game. And it's through uh, attribute mapping and attribute conditions that we can enable that with Workforce Identity Federation. And then in terms of flexibility, this is uh, Workforce Identity Federation is um, currently supports uh, OpenID Connect standards. Uh, and therefore, sorry, people, it, it supports all the OpenID Connect or SAML2 uh, protocols. So therefore, any external IDP that supports those, those protocols can be leveraged with this, with this capability. And then in terms of looking at uh, from a sovereignty perspective, uh, you know, we've got to consider in terms of where data is stored. Um, identity is one of those considerations. So for organizations, if you look from an industry regulatory perspective or, or a country sovereignty perspective, you know, a capability like this will allow them to dictate where, that, where those entities are stored and therefore not within Google for this specific uh, example. So where that is applicable, that will be another advantage of leveraging a technology like this. And then in terms of, uh, I did mention just showing a more of a, an architecture diagram. So let's just look at the flow that would be followed here. So as I mentioned, the user, in this case, a developer, logs on to the existing uh, third-party IDP. They will then obviously authenticate whichever mechanisms or conditions have been dictated via that IDP. Once they are successfully authenticated, they get given a token. That token is sent through to Google via the security token service. And the security token service first does an evaluation. It refers to something called the workforce identity pool. And the workforce identity pool is the, is the basically the container of that configuration of relationship between the third party identity provider and workforce identity federation. So it contains the, 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 the conditions, uh, what attribute mappings there are, all those things I detailed earlier in terms of the configuration map to IAM policies to allow or deny, uh, all of those got contained within the identity pool. So the SDS service will evaluate the specific request against that pool, see if it's valid, is a particular, particular attribute mapping, and if all that is uh, correct, it will then send back a token to that specific user, and that user will be redirected to the relevant service. In this case, as you can see, it's to the, the GCP console, and they'll then have the right permissions to access the relevant resources. Again, detail to specifically what that IAM policy allowed, not broadly, but obviously still giving you, as I mentioned, that fine grained access control. So obviously you can see the full flow here is very beneficial in terms of taking advantage of the, of the user's common experience of signing in, for example. So that's obviously beneficial. Now, one thing I don't think I did mention was that workforce identity, identity pool is configured, but available in a, in a specific project, but is available, a GCP project that is, but is available organizational wide. So a second project, third project, whatever it might be, is also able to leverage this identity pool for this authentication. But the reverse is you could also have multiple IDP configurations in one identity pool. So if you want to support you know, multiple you know, ping identity, forge rock, and all these uh, within that single pool to a, a wide spectrum of therefore users, but to the same resources, you could allow, you could configure it that way as well. So there's a lot of granularity in terms of what you could do here. Um, as I mentioned, Alan's on the call, he's already introduced himself. And uh, what I think is more beneficial is that you can see some of this stuff in action. So I've asked Alan to come today and present in terms of what the VMware scenario was. And then as I said, he's going to follow that with a fantastic demo. So Alan, thanks again, and over to you. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, so over here at, at VMware, we have uh, thousands of employees and, uh, thousands, and hundreds of teams, all or many of them, leveraging uh, cloud computing solutions across you know, all the providers, including GCP. Um, as you can imagine, uh, trying to manage all these different projects and accounts at scale can be quite a nightmare, especially from a security perspective. Uh, the last thing we want to do is have each individual employee create and, and, and manage an IAM user for themselves, right? So uh, in order to do this at scale, um, internally, we developed a product called CloudGate, uh, which, uh, which handles all of this, uh, all of this for, for our various employees. Given the prevalence of GCP uh, within our organization, we need a solution that uh, would allow us to do this at scale for GCP as well. So this is where um, you know workforce pools come in for the rescue, and I plan to demonstrate this with the following demo. And this is our, our product CloudGate, right, uh, which allows us to uh, you know manage access at scale without having to create IAM users, respond temporary credentials of of service accounts, right, uh, that are appropriately scoped with the right permissions. Right? So as an example, let me go to the our common organization and. Um, gain uh, temporary access to uh, one of the accounts here. Um, so I can get both uh, programmatic access at the appropriate level, right? Uh, as a member of 
my specific team that manages this product, I have up to admin, but others may only have, you know, read only for, for instance, right? Uh, when you click programmatic access, um, we can get uh, uh, these specific environment variables, which we can just paste into uh, the terminal. Right, as you can see, access key, secret access key, whatnot, and uh, from there we can uh, run commands. Uh, additionally, we can uh, also get uh, web access. Right. All right. So this is what we're trying to recreate with GCP. Uh, so GCP, uh, what they offer is workforce tools. To use the workforce tools, right? Yeah, a little bit of setup is required, right? Um, you have to define a billing project. Once you define a billing project, you can create a a uh, workforce pool by you know providing a, a workforce pool name uh, and the organization that that workforce pool is going to belong to, right? Um, and then once that's created, right, you can then uh, attach an identity provider to that workforce pool. Uh, and you have to give it some some information that's required. Uh, most uh, and most importantly, being the the uh, client ID, which you can actually get from the uh, identity token that um, your identity provider exposes. Uh, so it would be the auto claim here, for instance. And um, then, also very important, is this mapping of. Um, I think this is actually a better example here. This mapping of, uh, I guess, uh, claims or attributes in your token to uh, claims or attributes that GCP understands, right? So here, uh, we said that the GCP role claim in our identity token here should be mapped to the uh, role claim that the Google SDS understands, and this is this is key because this is how we we um, can you know define principles in GCP uh, that will be appropriately uh, scoped and with the appropriate permissions you know to do the things that we need to do. Right? So on that note, I can actually show you uh, a principle that I have already defined uh, you know in our internal uh, GCP organization here. Uh, and this is the this is what it looks like, right? It, it follows this convention, where where you know you, you find principal set, uh, blah 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 blah, the name of the workforce pool that's going to be in use, right? And as you can see here, attribute role, right? This is this is how we do the I guess the role based um, permissions, uh, and then this term is what's important. This term matches. Power user here, for instance, right? So anyone who provides uh, an identity token like this with um, GCP role attributes um, will have uh, the SCS will recognize this and 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 understand that you know anything, any principle with power user on the end here um, that the 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 access token that's provided will have the the permissions attached with that principle, right? In this case, it's browser and service usage admin. Right? All right, uh, so I've already set this all up. My workforce pool is in place. Um, I can go ahead and just do the, um, the get the identity token and do the exchange, right? So I can, let me demonstrate um, the, the scripts that I've written to do so. Um, This one here just makes a request to the identity provider that we have in our in my development environment to get uh, an identity token with this additional claim, right? So I'm just going to run that. Now I have an identity token, right? Um, This other script has a method that makes a call to the Google SCS 
the token endpoint, uh, takes the identity token that I just demonstrated and gives me back the access token that will allow me to do the things I need to do in GCP, right? Um, you know, this is all documented in your internal docs, you know, what it need, what this endpoint needs, you know, um, and, uh, but these are, these are the main things, you know, provided the identity token, you know, the project number and whatnot. So let me run this script. Provide it the identity token that I just generated using our internal identity provider, which has the the GCP role attribute already attached. And there I have, uh, and, and we can see that uh, the the, G, the Google SDS uh, provided me with an access token that I can now use to do the things I need to do. So let me see, um, let, let's first make sure that we're not authenticated here on this terminal to GCP. As you can see, I don't have any, um, any permissions here to do anything. And that can be further illustrated by trying to run this command. Oh wait, this worked because I already had uh, the what? environment variables. <laughs> wait, sorry about that. So let me unset this, right? And I get the error, right? equal to the new access token that we were just provided by GCP. Hit enter, and we exported that variable. Now, if we try to list projects, we see that we can. That's it, folks. Over to you, Stephen. Thanks very much, Adam. I hope you got value from that demo as much as I did. Uh, first of all, I just want to say, please go and have a look at the, this URL that's on your screen at the moment. Uh, if you want to get more information on the capabilities of this product, and reach out to your, your Google contact uh, if you would like to try that. Alan, I just want to thank you very much. Obviously, these sessions are always much more powerful when we have uh, the customer's voice. So really appreciate uh, you, you being participating today and the, the, value, that you, the value that you gave us. And um, everybody else, I hope you have a great uh, next 22.